I just got a haircut, which means for about the next two weeks, I'm gonna look like a lesbian bridesmaid. Yeah, I don't know why. I always just look like my name is Freya, and um, I'm gonna sell you some kind of weird herbal abortion or something. But it is what it is. I can't really do much about it. I've got a little bit of espresso left in a, a measuring cup, I guess, and I can impart some Vim knowledge. So most people think Vim is for programming, but if you're really addicted to it and you're serious about this addiction, you're gonna start using it for everything. One unfortunate reality of the world is sometimes you need to write things that aren't code. And so people look to Vim. I mean, that's just the only natural conclusion to come to if you use it. I also totally encourage non-programmers to use Vim. You don't have to use Vim for code at all. I know people who are in the liberal arts who use it. And honestly, that's awesome because then you get the sweet Vim skills that pull all the girls and there's no computer science to deter them, right? It's kind of just a perfect balance. I don't really ever do like an overview of a video kind of thing. I think that's bloat, but just so people don't get confused here. The first part of it, I'm gonna talk about just like settings and useful Vim commands for writing. The next part I'll talk about like plugins slightly and like the configuration. And then the third part I'll talk about like what typesetting languages you should use if any, and just, I don't know, it's more of an open debate rather than a solved issue. So first of all, we want to look at spelling. That's a very important part of writing, right? And a classic example for that is chonky donkey. So let's, let's copy this like 40 times just to get some stuff going. And I'm going to VAP and then capital J to join that all up. Now, if I do set spell, you're going to notice something. All these chonkies become highlighted. And that's because despite how many times I lobby Miriam Webster, Chonky is still not officially recognized. And I can traverse between these with a uh, bracket and then S, different brackets. Just look at my screen key viewer if you're confused. And this is kind of like traversing anything else, like the location list, or if you're a Vim noob, it's just like hitting N, I guess, on search. Yeah, it lets you, it lets you move between spelling mistakes. But how do we actually fix them? Like, what's the process there, right? You can do Z equals, and you can see a bunch of things come up. None of them are chonky, unfortunately, um, but I guess I guess the best thing is hotkey. Hotkey. No, that's that's hockney. It's hot. Is there a hotkey in there? I don't see it. Maybe it's down a little bit. So you can. I think you can hit space. Let's do that again. Um, how do you scroll? No, it doesn't, doesn't look like there is. Um, I guess let's do turn key. So you can see that corrected it. Cool thing about this is also, if we jump to the next spelling mistake, you could prefix it with a number. So if I do four and then Z equals, it'll just correct uh, to the fourth entry. And actually, there's a, there's a very neat trick, right? And that's the first entry in the Z equals spell suggestions list is almost always the correct one I've found, except for weird scenarios. So for instance, say you're typing a name, like Sylvan or James, right? And you're not capitalizing them. If I do Z equals here, you can see the correct capitalized version is there. I actually use this so much that I, I have a key map set to leader C for correct. So I'm on the word, I hit leader C and it just corrects. Same thing with James. Sometimes you wanna like go back and manually fix it, but most of the time it's good to have that. And all that key map is, is just like leader C to uh, one Z equals, and I'll, I'll show you the configuration all in a minute. So yeah, we can also add things to our dictionary. Like say we, we really like chonky and we want Vim spelling to find that. You can do ZG. I like to think of it for Zat's good, kind of like a, a German mnemonic slightly. And then you can remove it with ZUG and then that'll take it out of your dictionary. Often pretty useful with like new typesetting frameworks, for instance, types, like you, you wanna add that. And there are ways to do this project specifically, like say you have one class where you're talking about a certain thing that's like very deep and technical. Maybe it's a medical term or a math term or whatever field you're in, right? And you want to just have that for, for your one paper. You can have like a local spell file. I'm not gonna go into all that and like different languages and stuff like that because it's there's kind of a lot to it. Uh, but if you do help spell, and then you can read all about it. Great references. So another important thing is text wrapping. It's very common to want wrapped text when you're writing, not when you're writing code, because that's like very hard to read, but you want your, you want this to not go off the screen, right? So you can see what's happening. You can do set wrap, 
and then it'll wrap like that. And then if you want to move through it normally, you can see it'll just J, K, skip over it. You can do G, J, and G, K, and same thing with G, dollar sign, and G, zero, and that'll move relatively. I messed that last one up, but you get the idea. The thing is, it's there's nothing wrong with this approach at all. Some people love that. They just define the remaps. I kind of like another way, and I'm not sure why. It just feels more correct to me, and I'll show you. I'll show you what it is. So you can do GW and then around paragraph, and that will break it into nice even lines. It's looking really weird right now because we still have wrap on, but if I do set no wrap, you can see it broke. And that didn't work super well because it broke kind of like across um, words. Usually I'm zoomed in a different a different way, and it will it'll look better than that. But I'll show you how to set up like automatic line breaking, right? So here is my setup. It's in an after plugin for a specific file type, which is types. I'll talk about that in a second too, but you can just define this anywhere in your plugin. So wrap margin is saying, I wanna wrap my text, but I don't want it to go all the way to the edge because that can be a little bit visually confusing. And then format options plus equals T, I'm actually not sure what that does. So FO table, yep. And you can see all the options available to you here. So it looks like T, auto wrap text using text width. Okay, so that's just gonna wrap text and the other options seem like they are for comments. Uh, so let's go back here. And then line break is just going to break automatically. I think, I'm not sure, these three, three, these three in conjunction, they're kind of weird settings you don't often individually mess with. Um, I've, I've kind of just found like, like I know about them, like I could look up exactly what they do and stuff, but I kind of just like found them from Neomut's configuration and that's like for writing emails. I borrowed those options and uh, yeah, it's what gives a nice writing experience. And then you can also turn on spell and then wrap automatically. I actually don't want wrap on automatically, but I'll show you what happens. Let's see if I have, if I go to my notes. Okay, here's a paper, but let me create a new one. Uh, paper.type. So when I start typing stuff, if I just button mash kind of random things and I get towards the edge, you can see it automatically breaks for me. And that's quite nice. It's just like you, you don't have to think about anything. If for some reason, like say you join a line by mistake or whatever, you're messing with something else, you can always do GW or end paragraph and then that'll fix everything up for you. Yeah, those, uh, those settings like kind of weird individually. I kind of know what they do. I'm, I'm not exactly sure on the specifics. I haven't really bothered to go that deep into learning exactly what they do yet, maybe in the future, but uh, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta choose your battles, right? So that's pretty nice. Now let's talk about typesetting and like what plugins, what file types, all of that. By default, I think if you're writing stuff for yourself, you can get away with just plain text or just no file extension at all, right? You don't need any LSP or anything. I kind of prefer just like a minimal nothing experience. There's no fancy syntax. Level up from that if you're doing uh, notes for yourself is like markdown, you've got headings, you've got links, like stuff to dedicatedly organize. Nothing wrong with markdown, it's a great format. There's one problem though in like an academic setting, it's a little bit limited in terms of your layout options. Like if you want to center text and stuff, like you don't want to deal with HTML markdown or anything like that. The other problem is if you're trying to collaborate with a classmate or something like that, uh, yeah, good luck getting them uh, marked down. Like normies will see those hashtags, they'll freak out. So that leaves the more advanced academic stuff like LaTeX. And for me now types, which is just like a modern replacement that makes a bunch of things easier. I have other videos about it, but yeah, it's, it's pretty much just the same thing as LaTeX, solves the same problems. It lets you lay out fancy things and all of that. But again, if it's personal, honestly, don't worry about the formatting. Like I've seen some excellent notes and excellent writing just done in plain text. You don't need anything crazy. This is also kind of brings me to the point of the philosophy of why would you write in Vim, right? When you've got uh, Grammarly and all like all these different plugins. And even for Vim, we have now Harper language server, which gives you like writing suggestions and stuff. And plus, like, I don't know, whatever new LLM companion writing things are coming out. And that's because, like, it's just, I get on the one hand, like, generative AI and vibe coding, right? That's that's getting rid of a bunch of boilerplate and saving you time sometimes, theoretically. And you can argue about it, but I can kind of get the arguments there. 
The thing with writing is when you're replacing your own abilities with some kind of algorithm or yeah, generative AI, it just destroys your ability to write completely. You start to rely on it more and more and you'll be a very bad writer very quickly. And people saying like, oh, it'll save time, right? I, I don't have to learn any of this. I don't have to spend all this time like cleaning up my writing, making things clear and concise. It's the problem is though, like what are you skipping over to get to that? You know, like, I don't know if you skip over all the work in life with generative AI and stuff, like what are you living for? Are you just living for the next pleasurable hit of dopamine, the next downtime activity? Like all the purpose in your life comes from work and improving at things. And same thing with writing. Even if you're a technical person and you really hate writing and it's just like, it's a thing you have to skip over to get to the next coding assignment, whatever. That won't serve you well, that attitude. What you should really do is just try to target writing. If it's something you really hate, it's probably because you're not good at it. If you get good at it, you won't hate it. And it's really not as hard as people think it is to get better at something. That's my two cents. But uh, back to the actual stuff, right? I use Typed personally because it's quite easy to get any arbitrary style. For instance, I have a snippet for MLA citation and I can just do that and it'll insert stuff. You can see up at the top here, this is a little like intimidating for people, but basically it's setting the page to have a header of a right aligned version of my name and then like a counter that goes up per page. The context stuff is just things that this language has to do under the hood. You can really just make a snippet for this, never like have to deeply understand it if that's your style. So I have a little plugin that gives me a live preview of my document with types to preview. But honestly, I have a key map because I, I open it so much. And you can see that just set up the date and like page numbering. And if I show like a bunch of extra pages, like let's do lorem a thousand. Um, and actually we can set double spacing here, which I think is set text and then spacing. And then the default is 1.4 EM. So it'd be 2.8 maybe EM. I could be getting those numbers wrong. Let's see how that looks. Okay, yeah, that that did something completely other than what I wanted, but I have hover documentation for this, so let's check it out. Uh, spacing, relative, 100%. Okay, it's not defined in, in rem, it's defined in like a relative, so let's do 200%. That should be double spacing. Uh, yeah, that looks like double spaced. And you can see it goes onto the page, I get Franklin too. And types is capable of any any kind of arbitrary stuff. Say, say you wanted a title, it's much easier than mark down to center. I have a snippet center, this sent, and then let's do, um, I don't know, a paper title. And then you can see, I actually put that below the lorem, but if I move it, yeah, it appears right there. You can do any arbitrary formatting, stuff like that in it. I've made videos about types before, and I want to make a full advanced tutorial at some point, but very capable little language. And that's basically how I do it. And then you can export uh, with like export. Actually, it's it might be types to export or tiny mist. Maybe it's just export tiny mist. I recently changed my whole configuration. And now I'm like not exactly sure, but there is a way to export it. OK, I can break out of the plugin and just do like a uh, bang types to compile and then my file name and then like dash f for format equals png or whatever and then oh it wants uh it wants a numbering template so let's let's forget the png right there let's just get it to a pdf and then you can see um right there yeah i've got the paper pdf exported so that's nice for sharing with normal people as a pdf you can do that with any other format that's serious to our markdown or latex or whatever but yeah it's just capable of doing that if you want to collaborate with people types i also love because i can get classmates on it very easily right if you're in um, a normal class like a, an english class or something usually using google docs microsoft word depends on your school then i'll just copy and paste back and forth. But say we're in a computer science theory class or math class, you need that typesetting, that those dollar signs and stuff to show complex math. Types has all of that out of the box. You just type like MT and then integral, uh, let's see, yeah, integral, and then we'll do like sub zero to infinity, and then of, I don't know, sine X, right? And then 
we go back, we should see below. Yeah, we're getting a little integral right there. And we could even make this like nicer and multi-line. And there's, there's so much math syntax that Typest has access to. So then I'll send people to typest.app, which is basically Overleaf. If you've ever used LaTeX, it's like a free online editor for Typest. Thing is, it's way better. It's got Vim emulation. Overleaf might have that, but... And it's like the, the collaboration is excellent. You can write things at the same time. The math syntax is pretty easy for people to get. And if you set up like any of the complex templating stuff, very, very good for collaborating with people. Because now you all have like an offline shared document that you can, I guess it's technically online, but you could download it. It's, it's pretty easy to get other people into if you're doing any kind of math writing. Just send them a types.app file. You can all work on it. It's just absolutely killer. So that's what I'm using currently. Um, and honestly, that's pretty much it. There are like some plugins you can get for writing. I'd imagine there's Harper LS if you want that experience. I like just completely minimal me and my thoughts writing because I don't want to be deprived of my abilities in a couple of years, but to each their own, right? And there's also definitely like writing uh, plugins for, for instance, like synonyms of words and stuff and definitions. There might even be ways like built in to do that in Vim. I haven't looked into it, probably should have for this video, but whatever, if there is someone in the comments will drop that knowledge. Yeah, I'm sure there's also great plugins. If you know one for writing, like it finds synonyms, it, I don't know, it helps you with citations, anything like that, drop it in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. Uh, but that's about it in terms of how I write using Vim. Uh, it's, a, it's a great little program for writing. I'd love to make a video at some point on how I take notes and stuff specifically, because I have a very unconventional way of doing that. But that's about it for this one. Also, what would be great, if you're still watching at this point, you're probably an advanced Vim user, because I just like randomly set a bunch of stuff that requires a bunch of knowledge, but hey, you, you clicked on it and watched to the end, so yeah. But uh, anyway, you could farm a lot of GitHub stars if you're one of those soy devs who cares about being hired like me. Then you could, yeah, create a GitHub repository and call it like writing.nvim or whatever. Literally, you need the most basic types or LaTeX setup, probably both so people can use them. And you need like two plugins to get this thing to work because Vim writing out of the box is great. Maybe you can even have a Harper LS thing going, whatever. And uh, yeah. That could be uh, your next ticket to uh, corporate hell for the rest of your life.